Hello everyone, welcome back. Let's do... Let's make this treasure chest actually usable. So we got the two separate pieces, now we can go and actually make it into a blueprint actor to where we can open it up. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our interact... We should probably do some project management here in a little bit. But we'll do in our interact... We'll just right click create a new blueprint class of an actor. This will be the trip. Did I spell that right? T R E A S. Oh, okay. Treasure chest underscore BP. We'll double click and open that up. We'll wait for it to load because my computer's been acting funky. All right. Let's drop this up here in anchor it and we will add over in the components tab a static mesh component this will be the chest base and we will go find that chest right there and now we will add one more static mesh component this will be the lid and we will add the chest lid. Now we'll just kind of line it up. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the snapping. Let's see, that should hopefully make it a little easier to line up. Ah, almost. Maybe five. Almost. We can just kind of. We'll just eyeball it. That looks about right. Close enough for what we need at least. Just double check the hinge. Awesome, good to go. Compile that. Now let's head over into our event graph. So let's delete all this, go into our class settings because we need to apply our interface. So we'll go to add. Let's get our interact BPI. That way we have access to that interface interact function thing so what we can do we can double click that to get our event interact and we'll add a branch with the B and a left click because I want to check to make sure it's not already open so we'll promote this to a variable call it B can open you can use this to lock it later if you wanted to do the same thing with the door uh, but we'll go over that in another video. So we'll come. Oops. We'll compile this real quick. Double check. Make sure that that can open is true. And if it's true, then immediately afterwards we'll set it to false. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add a timeline because we want the chest to swing open. We don't want to just immediately snap open. So we'll add a opening timeline. We'll hook this to play from start. We'll double click and open that up and let's say probably about one second would be good. So I'll take set the length to one second. We'll add a float track with that track button called alpha. Then in my timeline grid or whatever you call this thing, I'm going to right click right at the beginning and add a key. Time zero value zero and then right towards the end add key time one value one. Then we'll box select both of them. Clicking this little button will zoom to fit horizontally so that it fits just like that. You can also click this one if you like and then it lines it up real nice, but I usually just focus on the, the width personally. We'll right click and for the interpolation we'll just go to auto so that it has that nice smooth in and out feature. Compile that and now back out to the event graph. What we're going to do is on our timeline we want to affect this mesh. This one will stay in place, but this one we can affect the rotation of. Now there's two different types of rotation in a game. There's world rotation and then there's relative rotation. So the world rotation affects like how it's rotated according to in the world. Oh, see, relative and world. Right now it's on relative, but that's... Everything's relative according to some people. But what it means is if you have a blueprint actor, so I can place... Like, for instance, this chest that we just put out anywhere in the world. And if I rotate it like this, 
even if I go in here and look at the lid, it'll still say rotation 000, zero, zero, because the rotation here is relative to its own self. So I could do this, and then even if I have this sitting straight in the world, its rotation will be registered at zero, but this is relatively rotated. Oh, you, you get you get what I'm saying. That looks awful. Let's just do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to, on that timeline, affect the relative rotation of this chest lid. So what we'll do is we'll grab that lid, and we want to set relative rotation. This is what we are going to update. So we'll drag this over here. And then from this new rotation, we're going to do a lerp. That way it linear, linearly interpolates from one rotation to the next. Since it's starting at 000, we can leave A as 000. Now for B, let's go and take a look. Right, here's the front. So let's rotate it to where we would want an open position to be. That looks pretty good. So that is negative 125, essentially. So we'll go in here, and it's on the x. So on the x, negative 125. Boom. Now we'll hook this alpha right here. And I'm going to show you something real quick, that this shortest path is usually what I have to click in order to keep it to not rotate really funky. But let's take a look and see first. So in order to actually get this to work, oh, let's close you back down. We are going to need to make this uh, an interact object. So we can affect the collision by go with it highlighted going into the collision settings. Instead of block all dynamic, we're going to set this to custom. For the object type, we'll set it to our interact. And then just so that we don't mess anything up, Because we're going to be able to put stuff inside the chest, we want to be able to have our interact trace fire inside and not get blocked by anything. So once we click it to open, then we will set object collision type, set collision object type, whichever way works, and we'll just set it to world static. So what the collision, what this basically does is it can change what kind of object it is at runtime. So we can take it from being an interactable object to where now we've interacted with it, we don't want it to move again, now it's just world static. Or world dynamic, or whatever whatever you want it to be, that's fine. But that way, whenever we try to interact with stuff on the inside, our interact trace won't get blocked by it anymore. So now what we can do, we can just delete that and that. I'm going to fix that bench. Now I'm going to rotate that and... Put it in place, not too close to the wall, because then it'll clip. And then you know what? You know what's inside here? Maybe a gold bag. Oh boy, howdy. That's hard to... Them colors blend. <laughs> you know what? Two gold bags, because I'm feeling generous. And a key. That is where we can put that key. Let me guess, you're going to blend too. Hmm. You know what might make it easier? If we go into the construction script and uh, hit this lid, we can set visibility. And then we'll prom well, let's go ahead and click that little check mark, but we'll right click and promote this to a variable called lid visibility. And then if we click this little eye right here, what that will let us do is actually out in the editor, it'll let us just snap that lid off real quick so that we can go into lit mode and then place everything inside that we need to. And then when we're done, lid is back. It actually doesn't have... Uh, I don't think it affects in-game. Oh, it do. 
Yeah, it affects in game. But that way you can just pop the lid off, fill it with what you want, pop the lid back on, good to go. Ooh, just as a safety precaution, what we could do is in the event graph, we'll add a begin play. And we'll just copy that from the construction script and paste it. And then even if you forget, like you get, you put a bunch of treasure chests and then you forget, did I, did I click all of them back? I don't really want to check. Now we can just, even if they're all unlidded, when you press play, they'll just automatically be lidded up. Lidded up. <laughs> anyway, so here we can check our treasure chest. It's opening just fine. I'm picking stuff up. Um not being blocked by any more of it and that's dynamite so now you can go run around and put treasure ooh, treasure chests anywhere you like pop that lid off fill them up with whatever you want you ain't gonna have to work I can get rid of these now that table's awful we're gonna replace that table I tried to do it in one just one block to make it easier but it looks like hot garbage so we're gonna fix that so we'll, we'll put it with more legs like this to make it more in line with everything <laughs> but that's gonna do it for this one I gotta make this one a short one too I'm apologizing for the short videos unless you like the short videos and I'm not apologizing but been having some computatorial issues seems like every time I start trying to make videos something pops up <laughs> but I thought this one would be good to be a little one-off because then it's it's applicable to a bunch of different stuff. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had a good time. If you did, let me know. You know, like, comment. I don't like saying all that crap, but, you know. Okay, bye!